Hi everyone. In this very quick demo, I'm going to give you an overview of many of Blend's features for building an HTML application. And what we're going to build is a very simple Hello World application, the kind of application you may have built when learning another technology or language in the past. So let's get started. I have Blend running. And when you launch Blend, you'll often see what is known as a welcome screen, a place where you can quickly browse through your recent projects or open an existing project. In our case, what we want to do is create a new project. I'm going to go ahead and click the new project uh, the text. And what you can do here is choose which language you want to build your application in. Blend works great in XAML and HTML. For the purposes of what I'm going to be showing you, we are going to be building an HTML application. So the HTML node is selected. And from there, you can specify what kind of application you want to start off with. We provide a lot of built-in templates that get you up and running with more functionality. But for the Hello World example, let's keep it basic. Let's start with the blank application. And let's give our application a name, Hello World. Seems very appropriate. I'm going to hit OK. Once you create a new project, what you'll see is Blend's default workspace, which is largely made up of what we call the design surface or the artboard, the large area where you get to see your design really come to life as you're using the visual design tools that Blend provides for building HTML applications. And some of the remaining space is divided by a code editor that gives you live view of your HTML and CSS as you're making changes, and some of the other panels, which I will get to as we're building our application. So what I want to do first is display some text, display some text that will ultimately end up showing Hello World. There are several ways you can do this. You can go ahead and type in heading 1, which is the element I want to use in a code editor, and just you know start typing in Hello. Or another approach I, I tend to like to do is by doing it visually using our asset panel. So what I'm going to do is launch the asset panel. And the asset panel is a categorized listing of all the various components you can add to your document. This includes all the various controls that might be provided by Windows or from any third-party SDKs that you might have, might have added to your project as well. But we also give you a full collection of all the HTML5 elements that you can add. In our case, what I want is the heading tag. I'm just going to go ahead and search for it directly. Type in H1. And I'm going to drag and drop it onto my design surface. And notice once I've done that, you first and foremost see your heading tag has been added to your document at the very top. You'll see that in our live DOM, which is essentially a hierarchical view of all the, do of all the content in your current document, you'll see the heading 1 tag appearing here. You'll also see it appearing in your code editor as well. There seems to be some minor mistake here. Let me delete that. So what I'm going to do next is I want to say hello world. So I'm going to go ahead and type in hello, comma world. And notice that I am typing directly in the artboard, yet you can see that the changes are being reflected in our HTML as well. So we have hello world created. And you know we're not quite done yet. There's a little bit more we can do to really show off all the cool things you can do in Blend. The amount of space taken up by hello world is really small. You, know, you have all the space available. You have a lot of space, yet hello world takes up this very small corner the top left corner of your of your document and let's let's fix that so whenever you start talking in html about making visual changes making changes that appear, affect the appearance of something you're really talking about css and blend spend, you know we have a lot of great features for making your css styling really really predictable productive and just a lot, a lot of fun so what i'm going to do here is i have my heading 1 tag selected and i want to style it the way I'm going to style it is by creating a style rule that targets this particular tag. I could go easy. I could create a selector that targets all H1 elements. Or I can do something like identifying it somehow. I can give it an ID value or a class value. Let's go ahead and create a class value. I'm going to right-click on my heading tag and say, Add New Class. And what I want to call my class, let's call it Hello Text. And once I've done this, I'm going to check this box. That says create style rule targeting this class. Because the reason I'm giving this item a class value is simply so I can target it via style rule in my CSS. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And once I've done that, notice that hello text has been added to my default.css. You know, your styles, your style rules panel gives you an overview of all the style sheets as they're currently affecting this particular document. In our case, you have uidark.css, which is a Windows-provided style sheet that gives you the basic look and feel of all the content that comes in your project, all the controls, the dark colored look, and all of that. 
And then you have default.css, which is really where I want to make my changes, all my application changes that will be specific to my application. And because of that, hello text, the style sheet, the style rule that we that I just created given the class value of hello text goes under default.css. So great. So what I want to do now is just make it larger. So where I'm going to be making my modifications for my CSS is the CSS properties panel, which gives you this rich categorized listing of every single CSS3 property that is available for you to use. So I'm going to go and search for font size. I know that's the size of the text I want to go for. And I found my font size property. Let me go and enter some values. First, I'm going to type in 150 pixels. That seems large enough to take up more space. And no, that is actually not enough. Let's type in 250. Not, let me go by another 100, 350. All right, 350 pixels seems about right. And notice what I did here. I was able to find the font size property and start putting in values. And in real time, I was able to see the size of my text update. What we are doing is we're actually running all of the code, all of your markup, in alive. There's no baiting, there's no emulation going on here. What you see is what you will actually see in your application if you run it at a font size of 350 pixels. And you'll see more of this, you know, highlighted in greater detail in some subsequent demos. Great. So my font size is size of the 350 pixels. You can see that the, the syntax we're using is the font size colon 350 pixels. So I never think about that. I just did it visually. And while I'm already here, I might as well change the color of the element as well. You know, white on dark gray seems very plain, very boring. Let's go and fix that. So what I'm going to do is, I know I showed you how I can search for a property. I'm going to, this time around, actually browse through our category listing. We have a text category where the color property lives. And I'm going to give it a nice, you know, let's give it a nice, let's give it a nice yellow color. Nice yellow color. And again, I specify the color. I specify the color by thinking about it in terms of what the final result is going to be. I did not think of it in terms of the hex value, but if I wanted to, I could have specified it here as well. But now I have my color specified as well. And notice, very quickly, I was able to get up and running by creating a Hello World app and styling it to show some show in a different color and in a different font size. And in some subsequent demos, we'll go a little bit more deeper into showing some of the functionality for really creating cool Windows 8 applications. Because what I just showed you right now is very basic, something you could have done probably many, many years ago using earlier versions of tools that built HTML and CSS. All right, so let's move on to the next demo shortly.